If you have ever messed with the settings on the radio in your parents' car or your stereo at home, you may have noticed that turning the bass and treble way up or down have a huge impact on how your favorite songs sound. If you turn the bass way down, the singer's voice is very unclear. If you turn the bass all the way up, the song has a weird, cheap sound to it. If we're not actively thinking about our volume as a band and as individuals, the same problems can occur. Smart band directors long before me came up with the balance pyramid to show what volume each section needs to play in relation to the rest of the band. The first group we're going to talk about are low voices. If you notice they're at the bottom of the pyramid, we can also think of them like the foundation. The foundation of a house has to be steady and it has to be able to support everything else that goes on top of it. If the foundation isn't good, then the rest of the house doesn't stand a chance. The same is true with our band. The loudest instrument in the band should almost always be the tuba. The rest of the instruments in that group are the bass clarinets, the berry sax, and almost always the bassoon. The this group makes up the bottom of our pyramid. The second group in our pyramid is the tenor sax, trombone, and euphonium group. If you notice, they still need to play fairly strong, but they can't play any louder than the tuba and the rest of the low reeds. So if you're a trombone, tenor sax, or euphonium player, as you're playing, you still need to be able to hear those other people that are lower than you. The third group is the alto sax and horns. Notice that they're in the middle, so they are also really important sounds, but they can't play any louder than the trombone, euphonium, and tenor sax group, and definitely always need to be able to hear the tubas and the rest of the low reeds. The fourth group is the trumpets and clarinets. Notice that as we're going higher on the pyramid, the group is getting smaller and it's also higher sounding instruments. The trumpets and clarinets usually have melody, which is important, but they can't be any louder than the people that are below them on the pyramid. And just like everyone else, they always have to be listening for that tuba sound. The last group in the band is the flute and oboe. The flute and oboe are almost always the highest sounding instruments in the band. They need to listen down to the clarinets and trumpets because they usually have the melody with them. They also need to listen to the altos and horns to make sure they're not louder than them. And they also have to listen all the way down to the tubas to make sure that they can still hear them even while they're playing all the really high stuff or sometimes even the loud stuff. One group we haven't talked about yet is the percussion section. The percussion are unique because where they fit into the balance pyramid depends on the instrument they're playing and what relationship they have with the rest of the music. For example, a percussionist could be playing the timpani part that matches the low voice music. In this case, they would fit into the lower portion of the pyramid. On the other hand, if a percussionist is playing the mallet part that matches the flute and trumpets, they would need to play softer so that they don't overpower the rest of the ensemble. Because of this, I like to think of the percussion as more of like spinning around the rest of the band. Depending on what they play is where they fit with the, in the pyramid. Now that we know where everyone fits in relationship to the other sections, now we can talk about volume. If you've ever seen pictures of Egypt, you may have noticed that not all pyramids are created equal. Some are really big, and some are really small. The same holds true with our balanced pyramid and band. If we're playing loud, our whole pyramid would be nice and large. But what if we wanted to play soft music? Then our pyramid suddenly gets much, much smaller. But notice, even though our pyramid is really small, the tubas are still the loudest, followed by the rest of the low voices, and then all the way up to the top, the flute and oboe is still the smallest group that needs to be playing the quietest compared to the tubas. Another thing to think about is a lot of times in music, not everybody is playing all at the same time. What if we have a song where at some point only the woodwinds are playing? 
there's no brass and no percussion. We could still have a balanced pyramid, it would just look a little bit different. Because there's no tuba, now the lowest sounds in the band would be the berry sax, bass clarinet, and bassoon. Then everybody else would balance compared to them. The same would happen if there was only brass playing. Then the tuba would be the lowest sound, followed higher up by the trombone euphonium, all the way up to the trumpet. You could even change it in any combination, so we're always looking for the lowest sound in the band. What about if there's only one section playing? Let's say there's an awesome clarinet feature, and the only thing happening is clarinets, but there's three different clarinet parts all occurring at the same time. The balanced pyramid would still take place, but now the third clarinets, because they would probably have the lowest sounds, would need to be the loudest out of the three groups. Another way to think of it, instead of pyramids, would be to think of it band as a giant chocolate cake. If you're going to bake a cake, you need to make sure you have the correct amount of ingredients so that the cake tastes as awesome as this cake looks. If we have too much egg or too much flour, the cake wouldn't taste right. So we could think of the bottom layer of cake as our tubas and then the nice chocolate sprinkles at top would be like our flute and oboe. Yes, chocolate sprinkles are amazing, but if all you had was chocolate sprinkles, it probably wouldn't be a great cake. So we gotta make sure all the ingredients are just equal. Then we can make our cake either really, really big or really, really small, depending on what the music calls for. So when you look at the poster on the side of the room that says, make your band sound blend like chocolate cake, what we're really talking about is balancing and listening to the volume of the tubas and the people playing lower than you.